For this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I am confident that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Come on, if you're glad to be in virtual worship or in this building right now, come on, let's put our blessed hands together because we know that we serve a good and awesome God. Again, welcome Bethlehem family and friends, those who are worshiping with us via our streaming, via our Facebook Live, our YouTube, and our conference call. We are glad to be in the service just one more time. For he didn't have to do it, but he did. Let me just give you some quick reminders. One, let's not forget about Sunday studies. Sunday studies immediately following our morning worship. From 11 to 12 noon will be our Sunday studies on our Zoom platform only, led by Reverend Gilbert C. Young, Jr. Again, Bethlehem, our Bible study is on Tuesday, Zoom platform, the same one we use for Sunday studies. Now, 
I need you all to listen and hear me well. On Tuesday, 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 we will do chapters four, five, and six of the post-quarantine church. I know y'all saying, Pastor, how could we do all those chapters in an hour? We're just going to highlight and move on. The reason being, we're going to move our Sunday studies from Sunday, starting November 3rd. November 3rd, we will have Tuesday teaching. And it will be our Sunday school lesson on Tuesday, led by Reverend Gilbert C. Young, Jr. That will start November 3rd. You still have Sunday studies today. But starting November 3rd, we will be on a Tuesday platform at 7 p.m. So what do I need you to do on Tuesday? Read three chapters. It's an easy read. The chapters are not long. And we will highlight. I will guide us through the highlighting part of the book things that I think are pertinent that we need to talk about in this post-quarantine era. area. We're not post-quarantine yet. Let me thank all of you. I have made a pastoral decision that we will not officially open the church next Sunday, November 1st. Uh, we were supposed to. We were gearing up, and we're still gearing up, but we're going to move it to January 3rd, if the Lord say the same. Now, my reason for that was because the numbers in New Jersey are going up, and I'd rather uh, exercise more caution than anything. Now, I appreciate all of the calls. I appreciate all of the texts. If I did not call or text you back, please don't take it personal. It's one of me and 600 of you all. Amen. But I thank you all for all of the calls that you, the words of encouragement uh, that you all uh, gave me on Thursday after I had made the announcement. It was really, really, really good to hear so many from so many of you, all of the texts and the phone calls I received was just overwhelming. But I am grateful that so many of you are willing to follow vision. Listen, we are going to be safe, and that's important. Safety first. Listen, listen, I'm not knocking what another church is doing. God bless them. But as for me and my house, we going to do the right thing. Amen? So I am appreciative. I'm appreciative of all of your support. I'm appreciative of all of your support. I'm appreciative of all of your support. Um, also, let's not forget about our noonday prayer. That is on our conference call line only, led by Deaconess uh, Sarah Lewis. On this Saturday, this Saturday, we're having a trunk or treat. We're having a trunk or treat on this Saturday from 12 noon to 3 p.m. It is a walkthrough. Uh, all the protocols will be followed. Uh, Please make sure your, your children and yourself have on a mask uh, outside of the mask they may be wearing. No spooky costumes, please. No spooky costumes. Uh, as believers, we don't believe in Halloween. Amen. Uh, the best dressed car or, uh, yeah, decorated car, excuse me, <laughs> will receive a prize. Uh, the decorated car uh, will receive a prize. Let's not forget next Sunday. Next Sunday is our communion Sunday. Prepare your communion at home that after I finish preaching, we will take communion together. Let's not forget nine days. Let the church say nine days. If you have not voted yet, please vote. Please vote. Please vote. If you have their secure uh, ballot box in front of the library in uh Roselle, there's one in Westfield. We have been putting it up on our website and we will continue to put it on our website and our Facebook page of all of the secure uh, ballot boxes throughout Union County and Essex County. Please, y'all, vote. Somebody died for the right for us to vote. Let's not forget there's a local election also here in Roselle um, for mayor. I'm not telling you who to vote for. But make your choice. Please vote for the uh, mayor of Roselle. We need a new mayor. Also, uh, there's three schools. Roselle School Board uh, seats up, not mine. I'm finished December 2021. So I'm not running no more after this. Amen. Amen. But there are three seats up. So please vote. It's very important, particularly if you live in Roselle, whether you have kids in our school district or not, please vote that we get the right people on the board as we continue to move forward in these trying times of this pandemic. 
Amen. Pray for our superintendent, our very own, our member, Dr. Fisher, is the superintendent of the Roselle School District. Please lift him up in prayer. Heavy the head that wears the crown. Uh, no decision that a leader makes. Sometime everybody's not going to agree with it, but we're going to make the best decision as superintendent and board members So to keep our children and our district safe. So it is important that we lift up Dr. Nathan Lamont Fisher in prayer. Amen. He's our very own. Amen. He's a member here at Bethlehem and a a deacon in training. So let's lift him up in prayer. Not that he even asked me to uh, uh, lift him up in prayer, but I just felt it in my spirit that we need to pray for him uh, and continue to pray for him because leading a school district is not an easy task. But he is the right man at this time for this job. Amen. And even into the future. Amen. Amen. Now, there are some birthdays that I need to shout out, some birthdays I know. So, first of all, happy birthday to all of the October birthdays. If you want me to shout your birthday out from the pulpit, you need to let Katina know or somebody know. We're going to make a template, hopefully, hopefully for the month of November, and we'll put up all of the birthdays for the month of November um, on next week. We'll tr so you need to call Katina and give her your birthday for November. But this month. We, we celebrated all the birthdays, and we know people have birthdays already that I shouted out. But today I want to shout out Carol Burnett, who celebrated her birthday. Happy birthday, Carol Burnett. Carol Burnett. Amen. And I am pleasingly proud of her birthday, and I'm even ple pleasingly proud of my dude, my bike partner, Bethlehem Brothers on Bike. Yesterday was Wilson Mack birthday, Mack Attack. We are thankful for my dude. That is my guy. We ride together. That's my guy. Uh, I appreciate him and Eric, and I appreciate Wilson Mack. Yesterday, he was 165, but we thank God. Uh, I mean, he was 65. He was 65. He was 65. Amen. I thank God for Brother Wilson Mack and Carol Burnett and all of the October birthdays. Amen. This is the last Sunday for our breast cancer awareness, and you know we celebrate all of the cancer awareness people. We pray that you sent a picture so that your picture will be on our Facebook page and your name will be on. We salute all of our, not just breast cancer survivors, all of our survivors for those who um, have survived any type of cancer. We rode yesterday, me and Mac, we rode 18 miles yesterday. Amen. In a cancer awareness. So uh, we are grateful. I worked him on his birthday. Amen. But we are, we are, we are grateful. So continue to hang in there. Continue to pray for Bethlehem. Bethlehem, we are making improvements. Any improvements I see need to be made is going to be made. Amen. But we are happy. Many of you have seen it on Facebook. We have brightened up our sanctuary. Just some Windex, some rags, and some new bulbs. Amen. Cleaned our lights, and it looks simply marvelous. Simply marvelous in here, and I am proud of that. So, your pastor will continue to spend the money <laughs> to improve the church. Amen? Amen. 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 We will make necessary, necessary repairs, and we will keep everything sharp. God's house should not be raggedy. God's house should not be tore down. God's house should not look like a junkyard. Amen? Amen. And so we will continue to do. We will be uh, accountable for everything we do. Amen. But we will keep God's house beautiful. Amen. We will continue to improve God's house wherever I see a need. Amen. 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 So God bless you. Uh, Deacon Coleman is going to come and bless us in our morning prayer. After that, we are going to have the Dapper Dan, Reverend Gilbert C. Young Jr. to lead us in scripture. Following that, we will have our preacher. Today is our Unity Sunday and Survivor Sunday. We have a preacher in the house. I am thankful for this preacher, my sister, and the person of Reverend Thorsell C. Williams, executive pastor of the New Hope 
uh, Baptist Church in East Orange. She is somebody's preacher, and she's taken time out of her busy schedule to come and share. Had I not invited her to come and share, I, my mother would have disowned me because besides me, I would like to think I'm my mother's favorite preacher, but it's a close, close race. Amen, because she loved Reverend Williams, her and my wife love some Reverend Thorsell Williams. Amen. My mother probably was up at 6 o'clock tuned in because she knew <laughs> that Reverend Williams was going to be here. So we're grateful for her coming to bless us. And we're going to receive her after uh, Deacon Coleman prayer, Reverend Young scripture, the praise team. Well, some soloists. <laughs> Amen. That's here with us today. Amen is going to bless us. After that, we will hear from Reverend Thorsell Williams. So we ask that you sit in, don't sit in your tent doors in, in judgment, that you help her preach even from this virtual space. Amen. And those of us who are in the sanctuary right now, we will also help her preach. Let the church say amen. morning church <clears throat> let us bow our heads on the word of prayer oh heavenly father just again we come heavenly father to thank you for another day's journey we thank you oh god for a night of rest on last night and this morning you touch it with a thing of love and we receive the new day oh heavenly father we ask oh god your blessing upon this church we ask you oh god to bless all churches that is open in your name. We ask, O Heavenly Father, for blessing of the nation today. Heavenly Father, we are in this uh, coronavirus, and O Heavenly Father, man don't know what to do about it. But O God, I know that you sit high and you look low. And O Heavenly Father, you have all power in your hand. And I can uh, continually, O God, pray for healing of the nation, for healing of the world. We pray now, O oh God, as we come to this service, that you will bless the service, O oh Heavenly Father, and that you will bless Heavenly Father, Reverend Williams, as she come and bring the message to us today. We ask you, O oh God, to just dip her down in the storehouse of wisdom, and when she come up, O oh God, she will bring your message, O oh God, to your peoples. In Jesus' name we pray. We ask, O oh Heavenly Father, you bless all of those, O oh Heavenly Father, that laying on their bed of affliction today. O oh Heavenly Father, let them know, O oh God, that you sit high and you look low and let them look to you, Heavenly Father, for healing power, for you have all power in the hem of your garment. We ask you now to continue to be with us. We thank you. We praise you, O God, and we bless your holy in your righteous name. In the name of Christ, we pray. Thank you for your blessing. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the 27th Division of Psalm, 27th Division of Psalm, and the word of the Lord reads as follows, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advanced against me, to devour me, it, were, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, 
my heart will not fear. The war break out against me. Even then, I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For the day of trouble, he will keep me my sake. In, my, in his dwelling, he will hide me in the shelter of his secret tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me and his sacred tent I will sacrifice with a shout of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Then my father and my mother forsake me. The Lord will receive me. Teach me your way. Lord, lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desires of my foes. For false witnesses, oh, glory to God, rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Thus ends the reading of the word of God. May the Lord continue to bless his already blessed word. Just remember Just remember Better days are coming Friends Will leave you All by yourself don't cry, cause better days are coming. 
what you're going through. Hey, but stay focused and never lose sight. I know people. so grateful on today amen it's my prayer amen on today that in between your grits <laughs> in between your pancakes and your cup of coffee on this sunday morning hallelujah that you will take some time amen to just give god all the praise the honor the glory come on the people in the sanctuary amen y'all can be seated amen we thank god on today and we certainly stop to give God all the honor, the praise, the glory that is due his name. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited, amen, about what God is doing. Amen. I don't want to rush ahead into the message. And I know this has been a rough season, but God is still well able to bless us. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, we've given God all his praise, honor, and glory. Can y'all help me? Amen. Bless God for my brother beloved. Amen. Amen. And the path in the person. Uh, Pastor Jeffrey Bryan, amen. 
Amen. And in the person of Lady Kia, First Lady, we love you. Amen. Amen. And I won't leave out Mama. Mama, I love you right back. Hallelujah. Amen. And certainly to the kids. Uh, my husband would have been here with us on today, Pastor Jeff, but some of the, our kids, although they're, they're big people, but they just, uh, we had an influx of kids from Georgia and other places. So I said, uh, babe, well, you're going to have to stay behind with the kids today. And he said, ain't you going to Jeff's? I said, yes, I am. I said, but you have to stay here with the kids until I come. <laughs> and so I come back. They're big people, but we thank God. Uh, you know, we have. Uh, they're going to be preparing to leave out, so I didn't want them to feel rushed or having to stay to wait for me to come back. But I said all of that to say that my husband sends his love, amen, and his support in this day. We thank my cousin Keisha who brought us down on today. And just for all of you all who are here, all of you all who are listening, it is Unity Day. And I do believe that the Lord has a word for us on today. That word on today is found in Nehemiah chapter 8. And we're going to go there on today. Nehemiah chapter 8. Amen. I believe I gave the tech people verses 9 through 10. But I want to start reading at Nehemiah chapter 8 beginning at verse 1. It's unity day. Amen. Amen. There, it is unity day. And I believe the Lord has a word for us. And it reads as such. I'm reading from the King James Version. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spoke in, unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that would hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, and before the men and the women and those that could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose, and beside him stood Matani and Shema, and Aniah and Uriah, and Hilda and Mesiel, on the right hand and on the left, uh, Padiah and Mishael and Malachi and Hashem and Hashban and Zechariah and Misham. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it all, the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worship the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also, Yeshua and uh, Benai and Sherebai and Jamin and Akub and uh, Shabbath and Hodeb and Mesiel and Kelita and Azariah and Josebed. Y'all didn't know these names was already here. Amen. And Haman and Pelea. Thank God for Hebrew. Amen. And Levites caused the people to understand the law and the people stood in their place. So they read the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and cause them to understand the reading and Nehemiah which is Tershatha and Ezra the priest the scribe and the Levites that taught the people said unto all the people this day is holy unto the Lord your God mourn not nor weep uh, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law and then he said unto them go your way y'all and eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy unto the Lord, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. I read all of that on today just to talk to y'all for a moment uh, in this unity day about command joy. I, I came to leave y'all with a declaration. You may be seated in the Lord's presence that on this day you would command joy. I, I know it's a lot going on in the earth. I know we are still mid-pandemic, but I came by with a word that if we're going to do what God has called us to do in this season, then we've got to do it with joy. Father, we thank you on today and we praise you. God, we love you. We adore you. We lift you up to your rightful place of praise and adoration and worship and trust. We thank you, oh God, that of the many things you've called us to be in this pandemic, the one thing you've called us to be is unified. And so, Father, we thank God for this Bethlehem Baptist Church that they heard your voice and they are still moving forward, not just with calendar occasions, but they are moving forward with the spirit of the church. 
Because even in the earth's darkest hour, you call, still call for the church to shine bright. And so we thank you even, Lord, for being in a sanctuary that is illuminated with your light and your love. We thank you for a living example in the earth. Now, God, I ask that you would anoint these next moments, oh God. Consecrate me even the more that I might speak as you would have me to speak. That I might love even through the sermon as you would have me to love. That I would encourage, Lord God, as you would have me to courage, encourage. Father, we sanctify this time for you, oh God. And we cast out anything that is unlike you. It is all for your son's sakes that we do it. And that souls will be saved and edified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is said, church, uh, that there's a quote that states that life is 10% what happens to us and 90% how we respond. I've heard many a preacher, teacher, CEO state that your attitude determines your altitude. And if that is so on today, our text on today speaks volumes to us and is tailored to teach us that these sayings as it is are literally listing the promises that are manifested from God have everything to do with our posture in his lordship. Yeah, see everything that we move through and everything that we go through in God God is looking to see what our posture is in his lordship. I, I believe, Pastor, as much as I love church, I too was raised in the Lord's church my whole life, but I do not believe it coincidental. I, I don't believe that God planned COVID, but I do believe that he allowed it, that he would bring us back to a level playing ground. Amen. I, I do believe that, that he wanted to bring us back to basics. I, I do believe, amen, as beautiful as this sanctuary is, that he wanted not just for Bethlehem, but for all churches to be brought back to a place of basics where we would understand that if we could receive the word at home, that it will be easier to live the word outside. He, he, he says, he says to us here, uh, we know here in our word that every word from God is in fact yes and amen. We know in fact that God cannot lie, nor does he shirk back from his promises. However, on today, if we're going to receive the life more abundantly, y'all, if we're going to soar to higher heights, if we're going to come out of this pandemic better, then we must uh, assure that we correct our posture in him. I, I assured myself at the start of this pandemic, all right, let me be honest, maybe about 30 days in. Because uh -huh. for the first 30 days, if I'm honest on today, I was like some of y'all. I was a little nervous and I was eating a lot. Somebody hears what I'm saying. Amen. Uh, amen. But about 30 days in, I heard the voice of the Lord. Amen. That there was no way, mind, body, or spirit that I was going to go into this one way and come out the same way. I believe that God was going to meet me. I believe that God was going to shift me. I believe that he was going to shift not just me, but I heard that shift was in the air. And if I might on today let me come as a good little sister does with a, a, a follow-up behind my big brother that I believe that a shift is in the air but the only way that we are going to get there y'all is if we do it together amen and, and, and so amen uh, uh, allow me on today to go back to our text our, our text finds us at the end of a building program y'all for the children of Israel they had returned beloved to rebuild restore and restructure I wish somebody could hear me on today Today. God had returned them to rebuild, restore, and restructure the walls of Jerusalem. I, I, the walls of the church. I'm sorry, the walls of the United States. I meant the walls of New Jersey. God had sent them to rebuild and restore and restructure the walls of Jerusalem. The Bible tells us that every every once in a while, y'all, that, that we'll look around and we'll find that there are some areas in our lives that have deteriorated. We'll look around and find out that there are some areas in our families that have deteriorated, some areas in the mental, some areas in the emotional, some areas in the spiritual. Amen. And I want to speak a word to somebody on today. Amen. Uh, God didn't send you home, amen, that you would lose it. Amen. But God sent you home that you would it, it could be exposed. And and he could put you back together again. 
And so the Bible tells us that under the direction of Nehemiah and Ezra, they worked together side by side, y'all. Uh, listen, this was their unity day. Priests and goldsmiths and merchants and perfumers and civic leaders from various districts. These men and women worked day and night for the Bible tells us that when they came to the territory of Halasheth, that he and his daughters made some repairs. And, and simply put, y'all, restoration takes a group effort. Uh, and that's why God is allowed allowing us in this time to see, to slow down, y'all, that we've got to be unified in this thing. Amen. There are no big eyes or little U's. Have I mentioned again that I love what this pandemic has produced? Amen. Because it's been the mighty equalizer. Amen. That it didn't matter whether they said you lived in a penthouse or the projects. When they said go inside, we all had to go inside. Yeah. It's been a mighty equalizer. And I want to suggest to you on today that every once in a while, God puts an equalizer in the atmosphere. Something that goes past how much money is your account. Something that goes past how big your home is. Something that goes past how big your title is. Listen, that's why this thing has not missed a corner of this nation nor this world. God didn't plan it, but he allowed it to be so. God didn't cause the destruction of the wall, but he allowed it to be so. Let, let, let us be clear that only one enemy destroyed the wall, y'all, but it's going to take everybody to restore him. The Bible allows us to know that anything great that will be done for God will be met with opposition. So I want to help y'all on this unity day uh, before we get to the happy, cheery stuff, because very oftentimes we won't want to hear that, but we don't want to talk about the spiritual warfare that has to go before anything any declaration of joy. Uh, listen, note this on today. Uh, if you're interested, Bethlehem, if, if y'all want to build anything, if you want to restore anything, whether it's in your home or in, in, in the church, uh, listen, note this, that whenever you do something good for God, some Sam Ballads and Tobiases will be sent from the enemy. Uh, Sam Ballad, y'all. Sam Ballad and Tobias were uh, uh, of the army of Samaria, and they heard about the restoration, and they decreed no success, no stability over the children of Israel. And I don't know who I'm talking to on today, but I want you to know that as you begin to put up the pictures of what you're doing in your home, and as you begin to even share in what you might believe our friend circles, as you even begin to share what's going on great in this church, I want y'all to know in advance that some sand ballots and Tobiases are going to raise up. They're going to try to come against the move of God because note this, the enemy does not want to see unity. And wherever the voice of disunity raises up, you better believe that the devil has camped out right there. He, 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 uh, they begun to come in, but I love this, amen, that Nehemiah, amen, gives credence to our argument. He says, listen, Lee, command joy as he answered their argument in prayer rather than being provoked to anger. And if we are honest on today, amen, somewhere between a pandemic, uh, the peril of black bodies still being killed in the street, uh, somewhere between a pandemic, uh, the peril and the pain of black bodies being killed in the street, somewhere between a pandemic and the peril and a presidential election, I need y'all to know on today that God is still looking for us to raise up in prayer. God is still looking. Amen. Listen, the Bible says, amen, that we are to watch as well as pray. And I just want to know, is there anybody on today that is willing to respond in prayer? Is there anybody? I know y'all want to get to the happy stuff, but I got to make sure that we're equipped to handle the blessing. Listen, is there anybody? anybody on today that's willing to return and answer in prayer. Nehemiah, Nehemiah reminds us that in order to do anything for God, you have to have a mind to work. Oh, they were not be rebuilding by happenstance, y'all, but it was careful planning, craftsmanship, gifts and talents and battle tactics were put into use. The Bible tells us that once they realized that they were present, the enemy was present, y'all, that they worked with one hand and they kept their sword in the other. And I don't know who I'm talking to on today, but as you are at home, 
home and you're getting tired of being the lunch lady, I want to encourage you on today to work with one hand, but keep your sword in the other. I want to encourage you on today. I'm trying to get to my first point, Pastor. Listen, I, I, I want to encourage you on today that as you are juggling your jobs and your ministry responsibilities, I want you to work in one hand, but keep your sword in the other. I want to encourage you on today as you're trying to meet the needs of your family and your community. I want you to work with one hand, but keep your sword in the other. I want to encourage you on today that as you're meeting the needs of your family, employer, and not trying to get you lost in the mix, so work with one hand, but keep your sword and the other. And I just wonder on today, amen, uh, the Bible tells us that every, every builder had a sword get girded at his or her waist. And I just wonder on today as we seek to rebuild through uh, uh, this time, is there anybody in the house that is willing to work with one hand, allowing your gifts, your talents, your treasure to be used, and in the other hand, you're holding fast to the sword, ready to come against every wile of the devil. And so it is with them, I believe it is with us on today, that they sat. This was the beginning of the Feast of Trumpets and a time of reflection and celebration for all that God had done and the great things he's going to do now. Uh, amen. That they found themselves. Amen. Now that the structure was in place. I can't hear nobody. Uh, uh, amen. We've been talking about this. Amen. Even though they say a second wave is coming. I wish we knew how to rejoice. Amen. Uh, even though they say a second wave is coming, Pastor, but the structure is already in place. Y'all don't. Well, we, 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 we missed the place to shout. Amen. Listen, uh, the, the first time in March, it was a sneak attack. Amen. But this time we're ready. Amen. This time we know how to handle it. This time we know how to stock up. This time we know how to protect ourselves. This time we know how to arm ourselves. And they did not celebrate, y'all, because the battle was over. But they celebrated because the structure was already in place. And I just want to know on today, is there anybody, I'm trying to get to my first point, uh, that is willing to celebrate for celebrate because the structure is already in place. Uh, they sat down as Ezra and Nehemiah and the priests led them in worship. Historians say that between the seventh and the eighth hour, the people began to cry out and all the people wept. Uh, I believe as we are present here, if we can count y'all, uh, and listen, they were somewhere y'all at about eight in the, in the evening, y'all, and the people began to cry out. Amen. But listen, this is not the time to cry, y'all. I remember when I was a little girl, uh, listen, they would say, listen, uh, there was a woman named uh, uh, Avita, and she would come on the commercial and she would say, listen, don't cry for me, Argentina. Listen, I, I, I want to encourage somebody on today, amen, that no, this is not the time. And my first point here, this is not a time to cry, y'all. This is not a time to weep, but this is rather a time of celebration. Listen, I want you to just touch your neighbor, amen. I know you've gone through a lot. I know, y'all, that we've seen some dark and lonely places, but this is not the time to weep, y'all. This is a time to celebrate. The priests and the leaders, y'all, were sensitive to their needs, yet they com commanded them not to weep. Uh, I believe, y'all, that they were able to offer this command because they had been some places in God that called for weeping. Uh, I believe that there were some sensitive priests and leaders that came out then, uh, as I am now, to tell somebody, don't weep. No, 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 this is not the season of weeping, y'all. That, that was March and April. I'm not telling you not to process through your grief. Uh, for those of y'all who have gone through, but we're in a different place. I pray on today that right at your dining room table, uh, right in your bedroom, that you can sense the urgency of God, uh, that you can sense the shifting of God. I pray that revival has broken out into your home. I pray that the worship of God, the fullness of his worship has entered into your home, that you can literally feel the move of God without being in the place that we believe only God to be. He says here, this is not the time. He says, I, I know we've seen some dark and dirty places, but this ain't the season, y'all. This is not the time of weeping. Amen. Uh, on today, this is not a time of tears, but rather this is a time to forgive and be forgiven. Get your families right. This is a time to celebrate, a time to rejoice. Listen, I know them boogers on your job is working you, but look at what God has done. He's removed you physically from the boogers that you can work at home. Y'all don't hear me. Uh, a time to rejoice, a uh, time to reflect. 
reflect. You were trying to figure out how you were going to get it all done. And yet in this season, God has enabled us to walk in unity with others because he's unified the work that we do. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Listen, that from the one place that he would bless us and the one place that he would gather us, he shows them then as he does us now that this is a time to look forward. This is a time, y'all, listen, the, the Bible tells us through the commentary that some wept for things that were lost. But I believe that there was somebody in the room that wept because God was just that good. But even in the middle of it, y'all, this is not a time to weep. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Not a time to weep. God is already healed. Not a time to weep. He's already made a way of escape. Not a time to weep for God will do everything that his word says that he will do. It's, it's not a time for weeping, y'all, but rather this is a time for worshiping. It's not a time for weeping, uh, but rather this is a time for winning. Secondly, y'all, though on, on this Unity Day, I want to encourage you on today to move out of the space of lament. Amen. Make sure you lament, but move on out from it. Uh, but, but, but secondly, y'all, I can command joy because it's not about me, but my joy is in the Lord. Uh -huh. See, the reason why he called for them in this unity day, and that's why I like, amen, that they said that all of them, the men and the, and the women gathered together, all the people as one being, amen. Listen, because they were able to be in one spirit, praise God, amen. Uh, uh, listen, they understood that it was not about them, amen, uh, that they don't just come together on Sundays, I mean on their day of worship, uh, that they don't just come to Bethlehem, I, I meant the wall, right, that they don't just come to these places because that's just where they come but they believe that they come to these places because that's where they're called Listen, I, 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 I pray that somebody received that on today, that listen, God has called you to this station in life, and God has placed you here, and well, since we are here, y'all, why don't we do something different with the time? Why don't we do something with the space? Why don't we be unified, y'all? And what do we unify in? We unify in the fact that my joy is not about me. My joy is in the Lord. I wish I had time on this morning, Pastor, but I want to encourage you on today amen that my joy is in the Lord strong and mighty my joy is in the Lord who's been mighty in my battle the Lord the same Lord yesterday today and forevermore the Lord my healer the Lord my provider the Lord my way maker y'all the Lord grandma's walking cane the Lord they told me when I was a little girl Keisha that he was the wheel and the middle of a wheel the Lord my strong deliverer the Lord my prince of peace the Lord my everlasting father the Lord my my mind regulator, the Lord, my heart fixer, the Lord of hosts, and most of all, y'all, uh, he is the Lord of my salvation. He owns me. I am not my own. Uh, and since I don't belong to me, uh, and since I don't have to worry about the enemy, uh, I just need to submit the enemy uh, to the will of my God uh, and command joy over my whole situation. Uh, listen, he encouraged us his own today that we can be unified, y'all. It's no time for mourning. It's no time for weeping. Move forward in unity to the things of God. Listen, that we will put our trust in the Lord. But note this, and then I'm out y'all's way, that I can command joy and be unified because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh -huh. I recently heard, Pastor, that the, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 a preacher say that faith was like a muscle. Right. And in order for us to operate it well, it must be exercised. I mean, it must be stretched. It must be flexed. It must be able to pull and pull off weights in order to function. I, I want somebody to understand on today when you're wondering why you've been burdened with some of the tasks that you have. It's for us to understand that acknowledging the Lordship of Christ, that to actually help you to get the weight off of you and receive aid from a spotter. See, that's what we do when we acknowledge and bring God into the situation. And I know somebody might be saying, listen, no, no, this isn't individually, but this this is why it's so applicable for Unity Day, that we would recognize as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit, that when we make room, that God can come in and make those things that are burdensome easier and lighter to care. Note this, y'all. A spotter is one who is when you are working out, they stand and they support you. As you seek to decrease your flesh, increase your muscle, and maximize your physical.
physical appearance and strength. And I want to tell somebody on today that as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. That when we allow Christ to be our spotter, he, he decreases our flesh, he increases our muscle, and he maximizes not just our physical, but also our spiritual appearance and strength as well. What are you saying on today, preacher? I'm saying that if we're going to come together, we need to know that God didn't call us to burden one another, but God called us to a place where we can help lift up the burden and make it lighter for somebody else. Listen, I can command joy because the Christ that is inside of me is my strength. Strength to do what, preacher? I'm so glad y'all asked. I will have the strength like Abel to resist, listen, the fighting with my siblings. Like Noah, y'all, I will have the opportunity to battle with folk to keep them safe and then keep them from battling to expose others. Like Abraham, y'all, I'll have the energy, I'll have the tenacity, I'll have the spirit. And then the battle to see the uh, manifestation. Like Abraham, y'all, I will be able to walk fully, y'all, uh, into what God is calling me to. Like Lot, y'all, uh, we'll have the ability to battle to get out of cities on fire and battle them because some folk will get left behind. Like Vashti, it gives me the strength, y'all, uh, that I can go before the camp. Like Naomi, y'all, that I'll have the strength even in the face of death uh, to push on in unity a little bit further. Like Ruth, Y'all, I'll have the ability through commanding joy over my life uh, to not get stuck, y'all, uh, in bitter places. But the joy of the Lord that is within me uh, will help me to move from a bitter place uh, to a blessed place. Uh, like Deborah before, during, and after the war. Uh, God, when I have the spirit of joy upon me, uh, when I receive the command, uh, will be able to unify uh, a whole army uh, and bring them before the Lord in victory. All I'm came by on today uh, to help somebody with uh, is to know that if we're going to be unified, uh, we ought to be unified in joy. And I know that's not a hard concept, but the enemy that's around would like it to be. Because some of us can testify that we were unified in the club. And some of us can testify that we were unified at the bar. And some of us can testify that we unify on our job. And some of us can testify that we unify in politics. Some of us can testify that we were unified when we was chasing down drugs. Some of us can testify that we was unified when we were stealing other folks' money. Some of us can testify that we were unified, y'all, and we had cut buddies when we was running around doing everything that we could do. But somehow or another, when it comes to the church of Jesus Christ. This unity breaks out. And then the work of God is not done. But I came to speak a word to Bethlehem on today that God and God alone would be the strength of this church. That he would call you to a unified place. And that he would call you together in joy. It's enough folk gathering in sorrow. Enough folk gathering in sickness. It's enough folk gathering and bitterness. It's enough folk gathering and gossip. But on today, Bethlehem, God says to us, listen, that we would gather together in joy. I ask the Lord, Pastor, why wouldn't we gather in peace? Why wouldn't we gather in hope? Why wouldn't we gather in kindness? Why wouldn't we gather in meekness? Why a word of joy? Why not gather in long suffering? But the Bible tells us, and it is clear, that if we're going to be the mechanism to tear down Satan's kingdom, then we're going to need some strength. And that's why he wanted to remind us, be angry, but sin not. The Bible reminds us that every once in a while, Zion is going to have to rise up. But even in our rising, we will rise joy. The Bible tells us, consider it pure joy, my brothers and my sisters. Whenever you face the trials of many kinds, the trials of COVID, the trials of president, the trials of the world, the trials of ignorance, the 
trials of sickness, the trials of addiction, the trials of crisis, the trials of family, the trial of marriage. But the Bible says, because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Somebody on today, you need to get some joy in your spirit right now your home, right now in your bedroom, right now on your car. If you're catching this in the replay, I dare you to get some joy. Get some joy right now. Begin to give God a praise and give God joy. God, it might hurt, but I'm going to have some joy in this thing. I'm not going to let the devil win twice. I'm going to have some joy. Devil, the weapon you formed, but it will not prosper. I'm going to have some joy. I declare joy over my whole life. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you to get some joy with that thing. I dare you to just get some joy. I believe God that right now, whatever it is, stop crying over it. Stop lamenting over it. God has already secured the structure. The wall of God is already back up. Listen, I dare you on today. Get up from your couch. Get up from your bed. Get up from the table and just give God a little praise. Let him know, the Lamb, that we are united in our joy. I dare y'all real quick on the count of three wherever you are one come on we're gonna be united two y'all believe in god for some great stuff three we believe in god to take us higher now come on y'all let's give god some praise joy. Listen, the joy of the Lord, I wish somebody would get it. It is my strength. When the people look at you and think that you're supposed to be down, when they thought you was going to lose your mind, when they thought that you was going to be on meds for the rest of your life in a catatonic state, but God raised you. He delivered you. He set you free. Come on and give God get out of here the joy of the Lord it is my strength if you are unified in nothing else today God ain't looking for no weak church come on sir listen and that that's not a man that's not an indictment but that's a command to go forward that's a command that, listen, we come against every voice that will come against the house of God. The Bible says if you were enemy of God, you were enemy of mine. Every voice that comes against the house of God, statistics say that we won't be the same when this is done. Whew, I got to get out of here. <laughs> They're counting us out already. But, I, but if this is the great falling away, if God at this time is setting up a remnant, I want y'all to know that this remnant is going to be filled with joy. Come on, this remnant, hallelujah. This remnant ain't going to go about somber. It don't matter who don't go. But this remnant is going to go forward in joy because guess what? Just like it was with them, once God restored the wall, I, I got to get out of here. But once God restored the wall, you know what that meant? It meant that the riches was coming back. Once God restored the wall, it meant that the riches in the area, that there was a level of protection. And I just wish that there was somebody on today that could understand your wall is back up. The protection is back around. And God is going to bless you.
I don't know about you, but I received my word. Come on, let's give it up for Reverend, Reverend Thorsell Williams, executive pastor of the New Hope Baptist Church. Come on, we can do in your homes even right now. What a word, what a word, what a word. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. We thank God for a word for this house on Unity Day. We want to thank this preacher again that she spared not. She blessed us in a mighty way. I can run on to see what the end is going to be. Reminded us to be unified. While you're working, have a Bible in the other hand. Let nothing divide us. Want to thank our leaders of our women's ministry and our men's ministry and the person of our leading lady, Kia Bryan, and Dr. Fisher for leading our women and men. We couldn't gather like we once gathered, but we still celebrated this day. Rev, thank you. Put this in your calendar next year, whether we in virtual space next year, Rev, or whether we are in half folk in the building, put us on your calendar. Amen. Amen. So you can come back and bless us on next year. Y'all want to hear Reverend Williams again. Amen, right? Amen. So put, a, put us on your calendar. 20 October, 4th Sunday, 2021. Reverend Thorsells Williams will be our preacher for our Unity Day. Whatever space we're in, she'll be here. Amen. Amen. And hopefully we'll be on the other side of this pandemic. But if not. We still going to worship the Lord. Listen, if you would like to be a part of our church, go to bmbcroselle.org. There is a form there that says new members. Fill it out and submit it. We'll get to our office and someone will get back in touch with you within 24 hours. If you need special prayer, go to bmbcroselle.org. And when you go there, you'll see a space a, a line for you to uh, thing for you to push for prayer requests push the prayer requests fill it out hit submit and someone will get in touch with you within 25 hours again thank you for all of you who continue to support the church financially through your tithes and your offering let's continue to be uh, good stewards of God's uh, how God has blessed us uh, you can give through our cash app, through our Givelify. Uh, you can drop it off. You can mail it. Uh, if you mail it, please, checks only. We appreciate the cash, but if you're going to bring cash, just bring it on Sunday morning, anywhere from between 930 to 1230. Uh, one of our trustees are here. Again, Bethlehem. Uh, Sunday study will start at 1130, 1130, led by Reverend Gilbert C. Young, Jr., uh, this will be the last Sunday for Sunday study. We will move it to November 3rd. It will be Tuesday teaching, and we still will have a uh, Sunday school lesson will be taught on Tuesday. We're just going to shift it, shift a little bit. Amen. And Reverend Young will take care of the Tuesday teaching. Amen. While Pastor takes a little break. Amen. Uh, all of this Zoom and all of this, as I told you all on Tuesday, I need a break and I'm not afraid to say I need a break. Amen. Amen. And so same time, same bat channel on next Sunday. We pray you are blessed through this word on today. Unity day, unity day. And let's stay together. This is not a time for the church to fall apart, but it's a time for us to stay together. Let me thank our tech team led by Sister Kathy A. I know somebody said I'm always calling her name because I call people name that's doing stuff. Amen. I want to thank Sister Kathy A., Sister Shakira Hickman, A.J. Smith. 
Amen. I want to thank Darren uh, Fullman for the audio. Thank our musicians, led by Reverend Barry and Mike Reeves. And uh, what's your name, man? Sherrod. Okay, and Brother Sherrod on the drums. Amen. Thank a portion of these soloists that have blessed us. Reverend Gilbert C. Young and everybody who make up this world. Let me thank, because I'm a firm believer in, let me thank people now so they all uh, can't say I didn't, I didn't thank them. Let me thank our clean team. Amen. Sister Deborah Harmon, Sister Carol Baker, Sister Cynthia Manley, and Sister Crystal Wheeler and LaShawn Brooks make up our clean team. And they are here. Uh, to make sure the church is cleaned immediately after we vacate the sanctuary and the building. They, they are here cleaning. And so we thank them for their efforts, not having their hand out, amen, but having a hand that wants to help, amen. So we thank everybody for your thank you, Diane. Diane is in the sound room now uh, learning how to do the audio. So we thank her for working with Brother Darren. This is what we're talking about, a team, a team. A team. Nobody should be doing, everybody should have a backup. Amen. Amen. And if we work together, thank you too, Eric. Amen. Amen. I don't know why he was here at 7 this morning. I looked out the window. I was like, oh, okay. Amen. But we thank you for being here early. Amen. 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 All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you again, Reverend Williams. Amen. Amen. Sunday studies, Sunday studies at 11.30, Sunday studies. thankful for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We ask, Father God, that you pour back into Reverend Williams everything she's poured out to us today. Let us stay unified. Let us keep your word in our hand. Let us understand, Father God, that you didn't bring us this far to leave us. And Father God, we're grateful for the word that we received today. Father God, we ask that we feast on it all week long, Father God, that it will edify us and build us up, that we may be better and better believers. We're thanking you for what you've done and what you're going to do. Bless our Sunday studies that will start in a few minutes. Thank you for those who are given through their tithes and their offering. Father God, continue to bless the Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church of Roselle and every church open in your name. We pray for all of our sick and shut in. Continue to bless them. Father God, we pray for these yet to be United States of America. We pray, Father God, for this election. Let your will be done. Father God, let us be reminded to vote. Let us be reminded to vote. Let us be reminded to vote. We're thanking you for what you've done and what you're going to do. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit both rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now, and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.
I love you, Bethlehem, and it's nothing you can do about it.